Today on World of Fasting Machines, we're in Castleton, England, exploring the story of England's famous Blue John Stone. Blue John is a type of banded blue and yellow floor spar that has been mined in the hills of Castleton for over 300 years. There is only one hillside in the entire world that produces the unique banded colors that make up Blue John. There are several mines that operate inside the hills of Castleton, but today we're entering the mine with Treat Cliff Caverns. The owners of the mine told me that they do most of their mining in January and February when there are less tourists, and the output from just a few months sustains them for the entire year. The techniques they use for mining combine old and new techniques. The new techniques use rock chainsaws that let them slice pieces out of the wall, but the old technique involved drilling holes in strategic places in the rock and putting wet broom handles into the holes. As the broom handles got wetter and expanded, it put pressure on the stone that caused it to crack, allowing miners to take pieces out. In this vintage clip from 1963, we can see the previous generation of miners using hammers and spikes to knock bits of the rock out so they can take it up to the workshop for processing. Once the precious colored material is removed from the host rock, it needs to be prepared before it can be made into jewelry. Like all fluorite, Blue John is brittle, so the craftsmen need to stabilize it to make it strong enough to withstand the cutting and polishing process. They use resin in order to stabilize the stone. The old method was to use boiling pine resin to impregnate the outside edge of the stone. In modern times, they've switched to using artificial resin in a vacuum oven, though the mine owners told me that they have been experimenting with the old pine resin techniques. Once the piece has been stabilized, the cutting begins. First, a slice is chosen for its beautiful pattern and shape. They start by cutting off any of the excess material and then use a grinding lap to shape the piece to fit into the jewelry they want to use. Once the stone fits perfectly into the setting, they can polish both the metal and the stone at the same time. The stone is so soft that they can use jewelry polish such as white rouge to do the final shaping and polishing of the Blue John stone. This technique is quite interesting because it's quite different from the rest of the lapidary world and doesn't require any special lapidary tools to cut the stone other than the initial calving wheel. There are other ways to prepare Blue John as well. Here we can see hand shaping done on 600 and 1200 grit wet dry sandpaper. This is an easy way to smooth out a specimen and give it a shinier luster. For the more complicated and impressive pieces, a lathe is used for creating bowls and cups. Here we can see vintage footage of the lapidary Peter Harrison of Treat Cliff Caverns carving a tiny cup out of Blue John. He has the stone mounted on the lathe and uses wood and polishing powder to shape and polish it. These days, many of the old techniques for carving ornate bowls and vases have been forgotten, but Tree Cliff told me that they have one young carver who has developed new techniques and is quite skilled at carving Blue John on the lathe. In the old days, cutting would have been done on copper saw blades that would run through an emery sludge and it would take hours to cut through a piece. Today, that cutting can be done in just a few seconds with diamond impregnated saws. Once they finished the old school cutting, they could shape the Blue John stone on these hand-carved, locally mined millstone wheels. This type of abrasive wheel has also been replaced with newer kinds of lapidary technology. Today, Blue John is a small but profitable industry, especially in Castleton where people come from all around to hike through the beautiful hills and enjoy the colorful stone that comes from beneath them. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next episode of World of Faceting Machines.